Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. This is the program Geek, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the basics of how to place Reba using Procom's pads feature so that you can detail all the structural elements that we designed in how to design a type of story building series. So, without wasting too much time, let's just get right into the gist of the video and get started. Okay, but first, please remember if this is your first time coming to the channel, please subscribe and if you haven't or if you've already subscribed, please check out the other videos that I have and also just leave a like and comment on this video so that we can just uh, continue making these videos for you guys so that you enjoy. Alright, so the first thing that we need to understand is, as you can see, I have some line work that is open for you on the screen. I am using Procon's pads which is what you open when you go to Procon under CAD and detailing and then you click pads so what I want to do today is in the previous video I showed you how to do line work how to come up with all this line work obviously it was not this drawing but it was a different drawing which I did and I showed you how to come up with the line work if you want the link to that video is in the description box below and also yes you can see it on the screen or you might have seen it on the screen and that is what you want to click on and also just go to the link in the description box and then you will be able to see that video before you come to this video but in this video now what I want to show you is the basics of how you put Reba or how you place your detailing steel or reinforcement steel using Pro Compact so that you can have the detailed and amazing drawings that you usually see me introduce or show up to you on the screen in other videos so let's not spend too much time talking let's now start placing our rebar and the first thing that we need to do is place the most basic bar let's start with our slabs all right so placing rebar using program pads is quite simple but just to give you a bit of information what we have so the blue lines as you can see we have our slabs it's a five by four slab two-way spanning slab and in this case the blue line represents the edge of your concrete and then the yellow lines represent the cover lines and the gray lines represent the supports which are underneath your slab so what I mean by the cover lines in this case it's 50 so we offset it by 50 inwards this is where your bars are supposed to end up at or they're supposed to be that is where they're supposed to zone from from this point to this point we don't want any bars beyond the yellow lines so placing rebar is quite easy using program the first thing that you need to do is to create guidelines or what we call construction line so you can create as many as you want if you want to place your rebar in this case i am putting some in the vertical direction and some in the uh, horizontal direction so please forgive my voice it's a bit low today i have a sl slight throat well don't worry it's not it's sh definitely not the virus but it's something that is giving my voice sort of a low pitch but now that we have this the other thing let's just put some other construction lines on the other diagram as well so this is what you want to do and then lx this as well lx to put your horizontal construction lines now after placing your construction lines you now want to start placing your bars so the placing your bars is easy all you need to go is go to rebar then under rebar, uh, just go to, sorry about that, let's repeat, it's rebar, then go to bar or RB, you can simply pull that up, let me close it, if you type RB on your keyboard, this is what you get. So the first thing that comes up is what we call the window scheduling shape code, win or the, sh the scheduling shape code window, and this is the window that gives you the various shape codes that you can use to select the bar type that you want and place it on the screen or on whatever structural element that you have in this case as you can see we have five shape codes we have sans 282 from 2011 sans 282 from 2004 bs4466 from 1989 bs866 from 2005 and then shape code 99 so bear in mind i am using version 2.6 to use all four pads so those are the shape codes that you will have if you have a later model or an earlier model that rather you will find that you have bs 446 1989 and bs and yes shape code 99 and sans 2004 that is for 2.5 going backwards then 2.6 going up you are definitely going to have this five codes and i think for 3.1 you will have bs a66 from 2011 so those are some of the things you need to take care of but then for the basics what we're going to do is we're going to stick to sans 28 
282 from 2004 and BS4466 from 1989 because I am sure those are the shape codes that everyone has. As for shape code 99, this is a good shape code, but it's a bit weird. So we're not going to be using it for the basics that we need to do. So we're going to stick to 282 from 2004 and 1989 from BS4466 4, 4, from 1989. So now let's talk about what you have to do once you open the shape code window, once you say RP from the keyboard. Okay, so once you have the shape code window up or once you press RB on the keyboard, this is what comes up and you have the shape code window. So obviously most of you will think straight ahead, you know the type of bar that you want to play, so just click on it. But wait, that is not the first thing that you do. Once the shape code window is up and you can see it, the first thing that you need to go is to go down to the bottom of this window where you have steel type, rebar properties and reduce with cover. And this is what we're going to do. The first thing that you need to understand is to choose the type of steel that you want, whether you want it high yield steel, which is Y type of steel, or mild yield steel, which is the R type of steel. Then the other thing that you definitely need to be careful about is the diameter of your bus. So you need to select this because it comes with a pre-selected diameter for you. And in a case where you just go on and rush to click, Whatever shape code you have, it will go with the diameter that you have, and that is not the thing that you want. In this case, we're choosing Y still with a diameter of 16, so we're good to go. And as for the bar mark, by default, it usually comes with A, but in this case, I had opened the drawing before, so we're going to choose one that is the bar mark you want. And now I'm going to show you the two differences that we have when we say reduce with cover and when we don't have reduce with cover tick. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to untick reduce with cover. And I'm going to show you how what happens when you tick reduce with cover or when you leave it unticked. In this case, we're going to choose the simplest bar, which is shape code 20. And that is what we're going to use for the first example. So it's going to be Y still, diameter 16, bar mark 1, and it's going to be shape code 20. So what we're going to do is let's now click on 20. As you see, it's now prompts you. If you look at the command line, indicate handle 1, the first place where you want your bar to come out from. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for this guiding line, which is almost in the middle of our slab, which is the first part of the slab. And then I'm going to snap to where the guiding line intersects with the edge of the concrete, which is in blue. So I'm going to snap there. And then the next thing I am going to do is I am going to snap again to where this construction line intersects with the edge of the concrete. In this case, as you can see, I have placed a green bar. So this bar, the green line represents the reinforcement that I have just placed on the drawing and as you can see it's spanning from the edge of this concrete to the edge of this concrete now the next thing that we want to do is let me just put a construction line to the side of that green line now that we have that let's repeat the process that we oh let me just move it a bit so b4 is to move that line let me move it a bit now that is perfect oh let me just move it again please forgive me for that let me just move it to this part all right that is perfect Next thing that we want to do is go to rebar, then go on bar. In this case, we now want to say reduce with cover. And as you can see, automatically it keeps the diameter the same, the type of steel the same, but the bar mark automatically increments for you when you're using Pro Compat. Now, the next thing that you want to do is now, you still want to place the same bar, but a different bar mark. And in this case, we just take reduce with cover. In this case, let's put everything to 50. Say 50 and say 50. Once that is done, pick 20 again. Then this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap where, this, where the construction line intersects with the cover line. And in this case, uh, no, please, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me just escape to repeat that. So let's just rebar, bar. Uh, it's still the same. Since we didn't place the bar, it, re, it still goes to bar mark 2. So we're just going to say 50 again. Please forgive me for what I did. So 50 again. What we're going to do is let's still go 20. This time I'm still going to... to snap to the concrete line so let me snap over there and let me snap over there but remember what we did is we ticked reduce with cover so we chose the option that we want our bar to, to automatically reduce with the cover of 50 all over and this is what i want you to see what happens so we have placed our bar but automatically what it did is it reduced the length of the bar by 50 in this direction and also 50 in this direction because we chose if you let's just say rebar then bar if you see we chose reduce with cover top 50 side 50 bottom 50 
So what it did is when it placed the bar, obviously I snapped to the edge of the concrete, but it remembered that I said reduce the length of the bar with the size of the cover that I want. So what it does is it automatically reduces the length of that bar by the cover that you choose, which is the thing that I wanted to show you when you the difference between placing a bar without choosing reduce with cover and placing a bar after choosing reduce with cover. The two lengths will be different. If you want to see the length of this bar, just uh, edit edit info so the first bar is 4000 that is 4000 millimeters long and then the next bar is 3900 millimeters long so it is reduced by 50 the other side 50 the other side which is a total of 100 so the size becomes 3.9 so that is the first thing that i wanted to show you how to place the bar when you have reduced with cover ticked and when you don't have reduced with cover ticked so the best way to illustrate that was to use shape code 20 now next what we need to do as well is see how we place another type of bar on the other side of the slab. So once we're done, let's now move on to that. Okay, now we have seen how to place bars in plan and for the slabs as well. I've shown you how to place the bar with the reduce with cover ticked and reduce without cover with cover unticked. The next thing we need to do is we have since we have placed our bars for the plan. Now let's put our bars for section or elevation. Let me see and let's choose a different type of rebar shape cut. In this case, let's do it for the foundations and instead of doing it for the plan, which is this part, let's do it for the elevation, which is this part. So the yellow lines again represent the cover lines. In this case, for the bottom it's 75, then from the top it's 50. Then I've left for the side because that is not too important when you're placing for rebar for your foundations. Now. To tackle this one is the same, go to rebar, then choose bar. In this case, we want to go with shape with 38, but we're still going to go with diameter 6, bar mark 3, then reduce with cover. So what we're going to do is we're going to say 75. Mm, yes, let's put 75 there. Then to the side is going to be 50, then to the bottom is going to be 50. So what we're going to do is let's choose shape with 38. So that is good, reduce with, make sure reduce the cover is ticked. So choose 38. So where do you want to place it? So this is where my first handle will be. And this is where my second handle will be. And then this is where my third handle will be. And this is where my third handle will be. And as you can see, the bar automatically reduces. But in this case, I think it chose 50-50. It was not able to orient which one was the bottom. But that is not too much of a problem. The most important cover that you need to take care of is the side cover. So just to confirm if the side cover is definitely uh, 50 all you have to do is construct a um, construction line then offset it by 50 and in this case as you can see it is definitely 50 let's check the other side as well that is L then LP that by 50 and as you can see the cover to the side is reduced by 50 so if you need to move the bar all you have to do is BA select the bar then B4 to move the bar then just move it to a position that you want so in this case now I uh, what you need to do is, I don't know if the length of the legs is adequate. So to edit the length of the legs, my legs are supposed to come to this portion because this portion is, let me just show you, this is a size 16 bar. So the anchorage length that you need is 10 multiplied by D. So in this case, this is just D vertical. So this is what we want. In this case, no, I chose the right, the wrong place to snap. So let's go with this, this, and this we have 160 so to edit the size of these legs all you have to do is edit the bar ei then as you can see it was 130 but we need it to be 160 so make sure it's 160 and voila there you go your bars have been placed nicely and adequate so this is the same thing this is how you place your bars using pro cone pads for the elevation so we have placed a bar for the foundations as you can see it was quite simple this was shape code 38 as easy as can be and now the next thing that we need to look at is placing a bar for the exploded beams or uh, we've learned how to place our bars for the section view let's just do one more section view which is for the beams and the column so that you just have an idea of how to put this bars okay so the next thing that we need to do is just put one bar for our beams and one bar for columns but we can start with the columns as well so what you can do is for the columns, it can be a bit tricky whether you want to reduce the cover or not at the bottom. So what I usually normally do is let's just put a construction line, then you move it later on. So with columns, it's a bit, all you have to do is move it later on. So usually in columns, you use shape code 20 as well. So it's going to be a 16 bar, bar mark 4. 
that's okay then we're just gonna place or i forgot the horizontal lines so this is where we want so the cover to the sides for the columns you can always you don't need really need to show it on the diagram you can always show it later on and it's usually manipulated on site the length of the bar is not really guided by the cover to the sides because you basically just put shape code 20 bars so all you have to do is rebar then bar then shape code 20 choose uh let's just see if rebar bar uh it's reduced with 50 yes because you definitely want to reduce with 50 at the other sides because what you want to do is to ensure that you have kick plates wherever you start so let's just rebar bar select 20 then go that way all the way to the and as you can see automatically it leaves 50 at the top and it also leaves 50 at the bottom which is what you normally do on site now let's see what you would want to do for the beams the beams obviously the yellow lines indicate the cover that you want so in this case let's just say rebar and we're going to put a shape code 37 the cover is 50 50 which is okay but i think to the sides let's um let's put 30 um i'm just thinking but let's just put 50 let's see let's put 50 and let's choose shape code 37 so this case it indicates where do you want your first handle to be i mean it's there then where the last handle to be then where do you want the bottom handle or the line so the line is you can see if i do this if i go to the top you see the other leg of the bar but if i want it to be down so that is it but i don't know where i want it to be i forgot to put the horizontal line so you can just snap it to anywhere now this is okay there you see there is your bar so what you want to do is ei uh in this case what do you want it to be the shape of the bar i want it to be 160 oh yes and that's the other thing when you're detailing beams the beams usually have an exploded view but your bars do not have an exploded view they come with the same scale and also the other thing that you'd want to do is to indicate where you the layer that you're placing your bars in right so i just uh, removed that but this is basically how you would place your bars so just before to move the bar then just uh, the cover to the sides maybe two millimeters. so all you need to do is then ei then change the size of the bar maybe to 12 100 let's see and yes the bar would choose but then the nitty gritties of how you edit those bars in case they're too long we will talk about that much later on but what i wanted for you to do is to appreciate how to place your bars on different types of layers and this is what we have done the next thing that we now need to look at is how to put a bar on your bending schedule let me just show you what we call the bending schedule. you go to window show hide the bending schedule so far we don't have any bars showing up on the bending schedule so how do you make sure that your bars once you place them on the screen they start showing up on the bending schedule is the next thing that we need to talk about okay so placing rebar on your bending schedule is quite easy uh the first thing that you can do let me show you there are two steps of doing this zoning bars or indicating one bar so in the case that you want to zone one bar this is what you do. let's start with this bar i know we started with one over there but we want to start with one bar the first bar which is bar mark four i think so all you have to do is go to rebar then what you want to do is indicate drawn bars right so in this case you want to indicate one bar so all you just choose that option let's just r or you can say r1 so rebar then go to one then select the bar that you want to indicate then where do you want the text in this case let me put it there so as you can see in the command line it's saying 1y16 bar mark 4 uh, b2 in the case of columns we don't really have any layer so what you're going to do is just do that and as you can see automatically on the bending schedule you have 1y16 length of 7400 total number 1 bar mark 4 shape could 27400 all right so there's a difference as well why it's 7400 the reason is i am detailing on a layer called text instead of uh there's a layer which is supposed to be column so this is where i was supposed to do that so what i would do is i'll just let me just repeat or let me just say ee -E, and let me just remove this bar all right so that was bar mark four and let's just delete everything that you have to just show you the correct thing so in this case choose four then go all the way to there once it reduces with uh, the cover then edit the bar mark for this bar which is definitely four 
once you do that you're okay you're good to go as you can see there's 2900 and the dimensions are saying 3000 that's the other thing you need to see with which layer are you using and which scale you have because once whatever you do and you place a bar on a different scale as opposed to your line work it will have the scale that way you placed it so that is one thing you need to be careful as well which is something we did missed when we were placing some of our bars in this case now let's indicate the bar r1 or rebar go the way to one indicate the bar that you want to indicate the text position is there then yes then as you can see we now have one y16 length of 2900 total number is one mark is four shape code is 20 and it's 2900 so what you want if this is a little too invisible for you you can always change the text so to change the text you can say tg to get the text or match the properties then text set ts to change so what you did is you got the parameters of this text and you set the parameters of this test so tg to get this text parameters and then ts to set the parameters of the text that you want now that you have this one bar showing up the next thing that we need to do is let me see let me just put uh another bar this is to show you what you can do to say rebar in this case we are now moving from to the slabs let's select the slabs and rb let's place a different bar this is going to be bar mark seven bar mark seven there you go. In this case, we now need to zone the bars. So what we're going to do is go to rebar, then go to indicate drone bars, then zone one bar, select zone one bar, choose the bar that you want to zone, which is that bar. And now choose where you, you want your zone to start. In this case, I want it to start from there. And then I want it to end there. And then the text position, I want it to be there. And then the spacing, if you go to the command line, it's setting with spacing. Yes, 300 will work for me. Do you want it to reduce with cover? Yes. So this is what you see. It has zoned this bar. So it's saying from this point to this point, you're going to have 17 Y16 bar mark 7, 300 bars. So as you can see on the bending shades, well, it automatically does it for you put 17 bars. By zoning one, it just means it, it is calculating the number of bars that you will need, right, of this type of bar, right, from this point to this point on the slab so in this case at a spacing of 300 you will need 17 of these bars bar mark says seven and as you can see we have zoned those bars so those are the two ways you can uh, indicate your drone bars and you can also have the bending shade you've been automatically calculated for you in Procon. so you can zone one bar or you can just indicate one drone bar that is how it is simple Another cool thing about zoning bars, you can actually see these bars. If you go down to the status bar where you have an X, just look where my mouse is right now. If you hover over, it says expand bar group. So just let me click on this and let me show you what happens. So as you can see, I've just clicked on X. It's showing you these bars. It's giving you a graphical representation of how these bars will actually look like on the slab. In this case, these are the bars. This you have these bars come from that side to that side. At a spacing of 300 this is what you actually look like when you're on the field if you want to close that you can close it up if you want this just place another bar rebar 20 let's choose from this side to this side automatically it reduces let's zone it auto 3 let's zone it from this side to this side and text position let me just put it there then let me just put three 300 right yes 300 let me just call this b2 right and reduce with cover so there you go you can actually move this text to where it's a little bit visible so it's now saying that for this bar where you have the circle right this bar there will be 14 bars y 16 bar mark 8 at a spacing of 300 and to visualize these bars all you have to do is go back to x when you click them and as you can see your mat is now there you have your bars they're showing up nice and well for you so this is the basics of how you'll be placing your bars in progress so it gives you when you expand the bar groups it allows you to see how these bars will actually be arranged out on site throughout your slab for you so you can do this for any type of structure that you want in any type of um element as well so this is the beauty of using procon pads okay guys uh so this has been it I think I've showed you how to place your bars, how to zone your bars, and how to have your bars showing up 
in the Benny schedule when you're using the program pads feature. So please forgive me, my voice has been a bit grudgy. And uh, yes, but hopefully when I make the next video, uh, it'll be better as well. So thank you very much for tuning in for this video. If you want to close this bar marks, so there you go. You just de-expand those groups. So once you've expanded them, this is what shows up. So thank you very much for tuning into the video. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel. And if it's not your first time, please also hit the notifications button. Leave a comment, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And then the next thing that we're now going to do is we have seen how to place the bars, how to do the line work. We have talked about the different shape codes and also the different bar bending. Um, I'm not too sure what else we talked about, but uh, the detailing rules exactly. We talked about the detailing rules. So the next thing that we now need to do is to start detailing the foundations that we designed in the house to design a double story building series. So uh, that is what we're definitely going to do now. That's the next video that's coming up. So please stay tuned. And hopefully in that video, I'll be back to normal, delivering the videos as normal as always. So until next time, please subscribe, please stay safe and please don't sneeze.